Uh, this is Damian McNamara with Elsevier Global Medical News, and I'm here at the Perspectives and Rheumatic Diseases meeting in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I'm speaking with Dr. Robert Wardman, who is a rheumatologist and professor of medicine at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in New Hampshire. Thank you very much for being with us. My first question is about the drug Babucistat, which an FDA advisory panel a couple weeks ago uh, voted 12 to 0 to say uh, the FDA should approve it. And I want to know, you know, how does that what is the significance of it if it is approved? How is it going to play into the armamentarium of rheumatologists for treating this disease? And well, first of all, let me acknowledge that I was a consultant with the company that developed this drug, so I have could be accused of prejudice, but I think independent of that, oh, that's good that this is a very exciting uh, uh, turn of events for the FDA, hopefully, to approve this new drug because there hasn't been a drug to treat hyperuricemia in patients that have gotten a new one since 1964. And although the drugs that are available can be very effective, there are many people who don't tolerate them. And so to have an alternative uh, is just fantastic. So the side effects are kind of a limitation in some patients with the current therapies? Well, the, the only xanthine oxidase inhibitor that is available now is allopurinol. And there are people who have had hypersensitivity reactions to it or can't take it because they develop significant skin rashes or gastrointestinal problems or liver function abnormalities. Also, the allopurinol's dosage needs to be adjusted uh, and looked at very carefully in people who have abnormal uh, renal function. So it calls for continuous monitoring of those patients. So for Buzostat, first of all, because its chemical structure is totally different than allopurinol, should not cause the same effects in people who can't tolerate allopurinol, should be tolerated. And also, it's been shown to be effective without dose modification at mild, in patients with mild to moderate renal impairment. What are you hearing from your colleagues in rheumatology about this particular agent? I think we've all been waiting and hoping that an agent like this would be approved because we all have patients who have severe tophaceous gout who cannot take allopurinol or the uricosuric agents that are the drugs that have been available. And these people develop very severe deforming arthritis. It's crippling, and their quality of life is really compromised. So to have an alternative for those people is fantastic. And one of your uh, take-home messages, you had several at this meeting when you're giving your presentation, I got was about asymptomatic hyperuricemia patients and not to necessarily start the medication. Well, we today we don't recommend that we can use a specific urate-lowering agent like the uricosuric or xanthine oxidase inhibitor to treat. Uh, asymptomatic hyperuricemia, but it's not something that should be ignored if it's encountered because uh, the one should determine why a person has hyperuricemia and then try and address the cause if it's found, but also address the, the comorbidities that are often seen with hyperuricemia, which are coronary artery disease, diabetes, obesity, hyperlipidemia, and alcoholism. So it's a full spectrum of things you have to look at and monitor even right. when they're asymptomatic because right. they're at higher risk of other conditions. Yes. Thank you very much. This has been Damian McNamara with Elsevier Global Medical News speaking with Dr. Robert Wartman at the Perspectives in Rheumatic Diseases meeting in Fort Lauderdale, which is sponsored by Rheumatology News and the Skin Disease Education Foundation. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.